Welcome, beautiful people, and thank you for joining us on Till the Wheels Fall Off, a podcast by Two Folk Couple. I'm Matt. And I'm Paige. And we're here to inspire others, to bring you guys into our lives and tell you a little bit about our journey. Over 20 years together, we've learned a few things. We're going to work toward being the best version of yourself possible. We're going to dig into building a positive mindset, discuss mental health, addiction recovery, improving fitness, building businesses, and insight into what it takes to navigate life today. Welcome back. Welcome back. To another episode of Till the Wheels Fall Off. I am Matt. I am Paige. Today we're going to be talking about reclaiming self-love and self-esteem in unequal relationships. We're going to be talking about what a bare minimum standard is in a relationship and why you might be so likely to take it. Why is it that you accept the bare minimum? What is behind all that? You might have wondered, I know that we both have wondered this at times in our lives, not just from our relationship, but just from relationships in general. Mm-hmm. And then... What can we do about this, Yep. if anything at all? And also, are our expectations too high? Yeah, do you just have high expectations? Is that the problem? If you just readjusted those, would life be grand? We're going to discuss every bit of that today. Yay! But first, a few quick announcements. We have restocked our In My Villain Era tees. They are on our website, along with stickers, recovery rocks. All three of those things are available. We've also got another tee that we haven't released yet. <laughs> Uh, just because I've surprise, surprise. just been too lazy to take photos. I promise you I'll get we around to it. We haven't been too lazy. We have been doing family stuff. Do You're not right. even go there. <laughs> okay? Well, they're available as soon as I take photos of them yeah. and get them up on the website. But I promise you they are coming very, very soon. Something we don't ask a lot, and I always forget to do this, but it is important because it's important for the growth of the show, and it's important that... It's out there so more people can discover it. If you're not already following the show or subscribed to the show, please do so. In Apple Podcasts, it's the top right-hand corner is a little plus sign. Please tap that if you are listening on Spotify. I think it's somewhere in the middle. Click follow show. I think is what it is. Follow. If you could do that, we would be forever grateful. And YouTube. And YouTube as well. If you're not subscribed on there, subscribe, please. Leave a review as well. Reviews help people discover the show. Yeah. And the more people that discover the show, the more it grows, the more people get help. And one day we hope to be able to do this all the time. We hope to be able to do live shows and and come and meet you guys. In order to do that, we've got to get bigger. So we need your help in order to do that. So if you've benefited from the show, please do that. Which I have seen so much growth with people who have just started watching or listening to the show like six months ago. The growth that they are showing is incredible. Incredible. And we and thank I'm, you yeah. so much for thank that. Thank you so much for showing for us there. that. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, it is. So freaking cool. Oh, we also have hats. Hats are available too. Yeah, Paige is wearing black and white hats. I'm kind of obsessed with them because they're super comfy. You're rocking the white one right now, but yes. there's a black one too. Yes. I wear that one all the time too. White one's like the summer summer vibe. Mm-hmm. It just gets dirty easily. So if you are a messy person that eats Cheetos, like you. Ooh, no, no, no. There's an awesome wheelie who told me that I could have like scotch guarded it or something. Oh, not a bad idea. And I didn't, I didn't know. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Cause I have makeup like all underneath my <laughs> stuff and underneath there's like Cheeto things. <laughs> it's not really Cheetos, but it's something. I don't some know. kind of it food. It looks like something. No doubt. But white is food. not my color, y'all. It is not my color. Anytime I wear it, I've got stains. I'm like a child. I don't think I'm ever going to grow up when it comes to that. Never grow up. No. Don't, don't apologize for you. No, I'm not. That's just me. <laughs> Next thing's up, we've, we've got our course, Independently Strong. If you're not aware of it by now, we made a course to help your empowerment journey. It's going to validate you, educate you on the nature of your relationship, addiction, what you can and cannot change. It is going to empower you and it is going to walk you on a path of recovery. It is our own version of a program. Yes. Uh, the 12 steps are out there. A lot of people get help in programs like Al-Anon. We've kind of looked at this differently and decided, hey, if what we have, do what we did. And this is what we did. And we recorded it in a course along with a licensed therapist. So it is backed with a professional. Um, it's awesome. It's greatness. You also get access to an exclusive community where you get your own private community calls with Paige once a week. Woo woo. Pretty cool little, I guess it's, a, it's like an adder on there. Shout out to all my IS peeps. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we've also got a community if you're not aware of it. The Tufo Completely community. Free. Something I see a lot of people do is they will just follow Tufo on like Facebook. It's 
That's not the page we're referring to. It's the Tufo community. And it's you can, a group, a private group. It's a private group. And you can find that by going to the link in any of our social media profiles, or you can go to our website. And I think it's just a, it is it's just it's a link there. on there that's under more. It says like community, community or something. Or and it ta- takes you right there. Join it. A few simple questions it asks you, and then come on in. We would love to have you in there. Yes. We have a new schedule that I put up so that you get um, resources from us every day of the week, except Saturdays. So Mondays we have newsletter release day, which is what you just started doing. It used to be Wednesday. We changed it to Monday so that we could spread it out a little bit more. Tuesday we have um, a call led by a member within the community. Um, It's at... It's, it's during the day. So it's for somebody, most people who are overseas, mm-hmm. if they want to be involved, they can join in and just chat with people, connect with people, vent with people. You know, it's, it's a beautiful opportunity for you to just have a support group. Wednesdays is our independently strong call, which you have to be a student for that. Um, but we also release our podcasts on Wednesdays. Thursday, we have another community call that is member led in the evening times. Friday, we have pages perspective, which is my, my short little episodes that I release out to like empower you guys and kind of just give you some, a little bit of extra strength for whatever you're going through. And then Saturday's free day, because we like to spend time with our family. And then Sunday evenings, we are starting to do Facebook lives in our group to help get you motivated for the week. Yeah. And as you mentioned, the group is 100% free. Yes. There's no cost to the group whatsoever. Come on in. There's no reason you shouldn't be in there. If you're a listener, if you are someone in one of these situations, we would love to have you in there. Come on and join. It's about 3,000 members strong now and growing. Yeah. And we have, um, all different types of posts where you can vent and you can share your struggles, but also we encourage you to share your growth and your self care, which is a great mixture. It's not, it's it's not like any other group out there. I don't think so. There there are a lot of groups that are sort of dedicated to this type of life, to Mm -hmm. someone who's living with someone in active addiction. Mm -hmm. And I think what sets our group apart is the amount of action that I see. Yes. It's, it's, Someone can be, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people who were in there just early on. Like I just need to be heard because I'm not being validated anywhere else. Am I crazy? And then they'll proceed to write what's going on. And they're just met with love. People just wrapping their arms around you saying, no, you are not crazy. I've been through the exact same thing. I know how you feel. We are here for you. But there's just as many people who were like, I was down in the dumps this morning and I was not feeling it. And this horrible situation happened this weekend. But you know what I did today? I got up this morning and I got a workout in and I ate healthy and I read this and I, this is what I learned from it. I set a boundary. Yeah. I listened to an episode and this is what I learned and I feel better. Yeah. And that's, that's what sets us apart. I think Right. is that there's, there's a balance of, it's not just depressing stories that are just going to wear you down. It is also empowering and uplifting and motivational stuff. It's reality. Yeah. I like it. So it's got a nice balance of everything for sure. So if you're not in there, come and join us. Yep. Uh, okay. So Are you ready? yeah, on to the episode. So we had kind of struggled with what to talk about along those same lines. We talk about the balance in our group, something that I think as creators, something that we struggle with at times is like, what is the right balance between validating someone and then motivating someone and empowering someone? Cause like, as we've talked about, we never wanted to give people just this impression that, Oh, Hey, just do what we did. It's really easy. <laughs> <laughs> and I think a lot of creators do that and it's, it's very, it lacks authenticity and it's just, it's everything that we're not. And like, it's everything that we just stand against is like this social media persona that people put out there. Like what you see is what you get with us. Yep. And to some degree, I think a lot of people will, will, will hear what we have to say and they'll find hope in that. And that's a wonderful thing. I think a lot of other people will look, see what we're doing and be like, well, if that does anything, it just lets me know that my relationship isn't those things. So I need to start movement in a different direction, Direction. you know, but at times it can get really, really, it, it, it feels depressing at times. It feels like you're just, you're fighting a losing battle and you can't fix everyone and you want people to be happy. And it's like, we can validate people all day long. And I hope that we have validated you. I hope if you've learned anything from us at all is that you are not crazy. Your expectations aren't out of whack as we'll get to here in a little bit. But the other side of that is that we want to be uplifting and let you know that no matter what happens in your relationship, like this, there is happiness. There's a beautiful life for you. Mm -hmm. I don't care what's going on. Like even when the world is just crazy and your external world is just nuts, your inner world can be filled with peace and empowerment and 
a lot of positive things that are going to keep you going on your darkest days. Yeah. I think everyone has to have that kind of resilience Absolutely. and we, we aim for that. And so I think we're kind of shifting toward that in this episode to talk about it mm-hmm. with a nice mixture of things, right? Yeah, I think so. So we'll get into that. So let's, let's get it started. What, I th- okay, before we do, I think that, so I have had the privilege and I mean it, I have had the privilege of spending the last two years with some of the most amazing women that I've ever known. Like just, I shouldn't even say women, some of the most amazing people that I've ever known. Um, as a guy, I grew up with two brothers, grew up in a very male centric life. Like I didn't have sisters or anything else. Like you were the only girl I really ever talked to for a very long time. <laughs> and I grew up with all brothers too. <laughs> so and that's not saying much. Like I wasn't super close with my own mother. Um, I just didn't have like a really good idea of like women just in general, like what women are about, like what makes them tick, like what goes on inside of a woman's mind or anything else. But the community, I mean, I've had the, the honor, the privilege of being able to watch people and like the strongest people that I've ever met in the entire world. I'm not just pandering to an audience here. No, I mean that like I have, you guys have opened my eyes to so many things that I didn't realize were going on in the world. Yeah. And one of those has become very popular here on our, since we share a, the TikTok account for till the wheels fall off Mm -hmm. your algorithm is my algorithm and so i see a lot of content that would be geared toward women and Mm -hmm. so i see a lot of this stuff and one of the one of the hot button topics right now is this idea of an equal partner right and that's become like a really popular trend i think i think here in the last few years anyway women have really started to say like enough is enough like i'm tired yeah i'm tired of this bare minimum i'm tired of you thinking that like that constitutes a relationship like I'm asking for, I'm not asking for the moon. I'm just asking for more. And then men are fighting back. And so you have like these two opposing forces in TikTok and social media in general, I think where oh, it's, it's like wild. one half is arguing with the other and it's just, it's a kind of a wild place, but I see these posts more and more and I side with women on this. Yeah, you do. Full disclosure, a hundred percent. I side with women on this because you I didn't th- always, what do you mean? You didn't always side like that. Like that responsibilities should be shared and whatnot yeah i don't remember being ever like i don't okay caveman I, about this no but, you were but not caveman but you didn't know any better because you think about one of the episodes that we discussed where you're like oh you have to ask you have to ask me to help you have to ask me to help well i shouldn't have to ask you to help you're a freaking grown-ass adult right <laughs> my point and i stand by this <laughs> on that is that if someone if you were in a relationship, if you were in any sort of relationship, whether that be like a managerial relationship at work or something like that, like there are expectations, you need to let those expectations be known. Growing up, for instance, like a lot of men, and we'll get into this a little bit later, yeah. are not told they're 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 cared for, right? Like you've talked about this, to. like you blame the last generation of mothers for I the do. way that a lot of men are today. I do. And I would agree with that to some degree. I do. I really yeah. would. I right. think that you're cared for, you're babied on my baby boy. They never let you grow up. They're kind of like domineering and overbearing. And what you get is a really crappy partner as an adult. Mm -hmm. The whole point of that episode is ask for the things that you need, which is what you did. Yeah. But you're right. Like, should you have to ask that someone help with laundry? Like, no, unless you've got some kind of explicit agreement up front. That's very like cut and dry. Like, and if you do, that's that's fine. That's cool. Yeah. Like, listen, I will do these things and you do these things. Right. Cool. Fine. That's wonderful. Yes. But many people don't, these, these roles are kind of taken on by the more responsible one generally. Mm -hmm. And they're left with many more duties, roles and responsibilities than the other partner. Because we got, I got roasted on that clip. Oh yeah, you did. I still stand by it though. I think communication goes a Again, long way. Again, like you said, you didn't know any better because that's how you were raised, and I knew that. Or that's just like, I knew that I had to somewhat train you. I, I did. I had to. It was just part of it because that's what I knew. What I got myself into. Now, if it's later on down the line and you're not doing those things, and yeah, I'm gonna have a problem with that. Like I didn't have to continuously have to like ask you to do these things you picked up pretty quickly like oh shit you know i gotta do this shit yeah i gotta get on it yeah like that's not the way that life works anymore like i don't have mom around anymore i gotta grow the hell up and take care of stuff i'm an adult i'm a grown-ass man Mm -hmm. it's not your job to take care of me and everything else around me 100 percent agree yeah 100 percent agree with that um yeah i think that communication can go a long way but i think (laughs) It w- I would be remiss to believe that people haven't already tried that. Mm-hmm. Although I would be led in the comments of that video to think that many people haven't because they just refuse to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know that there is a lot of pride that goes along with that, which is, I understand because I had the same thing. I did. I thought the same thing. I did not want to ask you to do something because I thought you should know better. 
something else I've learned about women is that I, you're just in general, the much more stable and responsible of the two of us mm -hmm. in general, like not just you, but I think most of the women I've met in the last two years, two folks, two years old, by the way, the, mm -hmm. the community, happy well, birthday community, not the community. Oh, not the, that's right. No, it's not the community. No. Community is not even a year no, or a little over a year. Community is a little over a year. Tufo, like us, whenever we it was July twentieth on social media is two years old. July years 20th. Old. But in that time, I've really gotten to see and understand things. Yes. Right. And like, I tell some of my own friends like, yo, do you guys know that we're kind of useless? <laughs> 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 Straight up. We got to pick it up, boys. Let's, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. And it's not like, again, it's not pandering. I believe these things wholeheartedly. And I've seen the benefits of them in my own relationship and the relationships of other people that are willing to listen and, and heed this message. Now, should we have to be in this position? Absolutely not. 100% agree with that. In a perfect world. Though. But here we are. Yeah. So what do we do? We what do we do? Exactly. So let's talk about some. Okay. Of that. Let's talk about the bare minimum. Like what, what does it look like in the bare minimum? Okay. In relationships. So the key signs and all that fun stuff. Oh man. Yeah. It tends to be. I don't know, like fully wholesale accepted by a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but it looks like, I think, I, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, the, the average dude. Yeah, yeah. The average it's, it's, dude. It's, it's putting in the least amount of effort necessary to maintain the relationship. Yes. So it's not an interdependent relationship. It's not a healthy relationship. It is just something that is maintaining the relationship. So it's going to look like lack of communication. So like minimal conversations. It's not consistent conversations. They're in, infrequent or they're, you know, superficial and they lack depth, right? Like there's lack of intimacy. Yeah, like real discussions real about discussions, real things. About real things. And sometimes like avoiding difficult topics. That happens a lot in these relationships. Oh, yeah. You know, the addict doesn't want to talk about important topics because that means that they have to look in the mirror yeah. and try to actually change things. And that's difficult. Um, and a lot of like problems are brushed aside or shoved under the rug, as people would say. Yeah. I was reading, I can't remember what book it was, but it was about the, some of the biological sex differences between just men and women. And one of the takeaways I had was that women tend to be interested in people and men tend to be interested in things. Now I've, I've heard debates on this too and said like, well, that's not necessarily true. And you know, a lot of women that excel in like subjects like STEM and a lot of men are actually really great in professions like nursing and whatnot. But I don't know. I tend to agree with that sort of a broad analysis. I don't think it's always true. There are always exceptions, but I think in general, and I wonder if this is behind some of the reasons that men are just like men put way more care into their lawn than they ever would their relationship. Like mm -hmm. they will go out there and fertilize that thing and, you know, aerate it and make sure it's got the right balance of fertilizer and they'll go out and spend time with it. But when it comes to their marriage, it's not just even. like, it's like, eh, whatever. Cause <laughs> it's just did the same sound. It's, it's a thing versus a person, you know, like, a, yeah, maybe some of this is sort of built in us, but I am a firm believer, believer in people's capacity to change and uh -huh. to grow and to, um, adapt to what's required. Yep. And I think that things are obviously changing. Like we, we've talked about this. Um, I re we did an episode a while back and it was sort of harsh toward men in general called, um, what's going on, what's with, going men? on with men. Yep. We first explored this kind of stuff and it was, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on with men and there's a lot of reasons that th things are the way they are. And I don't want to just sit here and say, Hey, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Like there's a lot, it's a lot more complicated than that. Yeah. yeah. But I just don't think in general, I'll just speak in generalities here. Um, that a lot of men know how to have these types of conversations. I don't think that they know how to have intimacy. They don't even know what that looks like. They don't know how to define emotions. Like think about this. I, I heard this analogy the other day. If you had been physically abused your entire life and I told you to close your eyes and in one hand I put a quarter and the other hand, I put a key and I told you which one, or I asked the question, which one's the key? You probably wouldn't know because physically you have lost the ability to feel sensation or to define sensation. You just don't quite know. And so you think about, think about that in emotional terms. Mm -hmm. If a man is feeling something and you're like, okay, are you sad? Are you fearful? Most men don't know where to start. I don't know. I don't even know what that means. And okay, so why would that be? Because a lot of men are critiqued and they're made fun of for having emotions. They're told you're not allowed to do that. But in the same sentence, they're told you have to be strong. And so you kind of lose touch with those things. 
And if I can do anything at all before I leave this planet is that one guy starts to have more emotional conversations with his wife or with mm-hmm. his children or with his friends. And I hope I can do that for people. Yeah. I'm not, by no means am I an expert at this, y'all. Like I, I had to go through the feelings wheel today. I had a really off day today. About yeah. A lot of fear I was experiencing. But in the beginning, it just felt like self-loathing. And it kind of presents itself like that. And you have to really explore, like, what am I feeling right now? I think for y'all, that stuff just comes so much easier. I don't mean to make excuses, but that's just, I think that's true. I think it comes easier. No, I agree with that. But oftentimes men accept their lack of emotional capacity as the standard. Yeah. Rather than saying, I lack there. I need to work on that. I should do something about that. And so it becomes like a bare minimum standard. Yeah. This lack of communication that you're talking about. Yeah. There's no, no emotional connection. There's no intimacy. Like you're having really like they'll be telling you about who's starting for the chiefs this weekend. Like Mm -hmm. you give a shit like, okay. (laughs) But I mean, they think they're communicating, you know, like, no, me and my wife talk. Yeah, we talk really, (laughs) but that's kind of how it comes off. Yeah. Well, I mean, this next point is kind of like that where there's inconsistent effort. Like you get occasional attention and it's usually when it's convenient for the less invested partner. So it's like as the man, it would be only whenever you wanted to talk about things, not whenever we want to talk about things. I know this is going to trigger you. Oh God, here but we I, go. I, this is why I always kind of look down on Valentine's Day. Okay. Because I felt like it was the one day where like Joe Schmo, the terrible dude who never gives any attention to his family or wife gets to show up with chocolates. And it's like, that's what everyone does that day where I feel like it should be done every day. And so, so it felt like... I don't know, kind of like force, like, fake. Yeah, yeah, like falling to the mean, like falling to the average. So you wanted to go the opposite and say, F this, I'm not going to do anything. But then it's, <laughs> but then it's really, really discourteous to you. And it's just, but anyway, so I really don't care about that day anymore. Just, a, just at all. Just a I used to, I used to love it, but, but the inconsistent that. effort, that's kind of what it is. It's like, yeah, when it's convenient for me, when I feel like it mm-hmm. sporadically, I will show up. Not whenever it's needed or whenever Necessary. you're talking yeah. and like you, if you can't get a feel on someone and know when they're struggling, it's because you're not paying attention enough. Yep. Is that too much to ask? Right. Yeah. And that's like the emotional unavailability where you're having lack of support. Yeah. You know, like the emotional support is so minimal in these relationships. It is so minimal and it makes us feel unheard, unseen and unsupported during difficult times. Like that's so common across the board. Why is that too much to ask? It's really like, not. This is a freaking, this is your life partner. This is somebody you chose to be with for the rest of your life. Like, I don't understand why that is such a big ask. It's not. It's not. Okay. But like many things here, what we will discover is that a lot of times you're asking for these things and they're not being offered mm-hmm. or they're not available. Yeah. It would be like ordering spaghetti at a Mexican food restaurant. Yeah. Like you're asking for something that they're just not serving. And that's the case a lot of the time. I do believe these things can be developed. They're human. Humans have the capacity for these things. It's just to the willingness and degree that you want to develop them. That's what sucks. And that's like the hardest part, I think, for a lot of people is when they're asking and asking and asking. And I can see it in you. Just just allow yourself to explore that. And they're just like cold about it. No, mm-hmm. this is what I am. This is who I am. You married me. You knew what you got yourself into. And you start to hear that kind of shit. Yeah. You yeah, know, but it's not asking for too much. It's really not. No, because on the inverse, aren't they asking for these things for for this stuff from you? Yeah, like isn't this a requirement? Right for them? Exactly. Like they are emotional vampires. Like they are the one who are always in need of your support. If mm-hmm. you would just support me more, then I could get X Y Z. If you would just do this, and I need you, it's like, you know, I, <laughs> there's a lot of a lot of guys I know personally that kind of fall in this category of like this, um, I don't even know the way to put it really. I can't think of the analogy right now, but it's someone who is extremely emotional, but they pretend like they're not. And they're become very reliant on other people to pick them up rather than discovering what it is going on within themselves. But they don't reciprocate that. They don't give that back. It's just a one way street where they take it and take it, and take it. Like I need you to support me. I'm struggling. I'm always the one struggling, right? Well, what about you? Yeah. Like this should be a two way street. Exactly. We should be talking about these things. Mm-hmm. And it's not, I mean, I don't know. I just, I see that a lot. And yeah. so I don't think it's an unreasonable ask. And if you need proof of that, they're asking it from you. Mm-hmm. What's the difference? Exactly. You know? Yeah. All right. What else is there for bare minimum? 
physical absence. Yeah. Like people that just kind of come and go whenever. Um, or it's performative. Performative too. Yeah. And I'm not talking about like, there are some people that are very committed to their family and their partners and their loved ones. And we live in a time where you can be really connected without being physically present. Like I know a lot of people who are very dedicated parents and they travel a lot, but for work, usually, you know, they, they travel, they're out of town, whatever it might be, but they make it back home as often as they can. And they commit, they are making sacrifices. Like, I don't think that anyone likes traveling like that. That's an ass whip. Yeah. I hate traveling for work. That is the worst thing in the world. And there are a lot of people who have to do that a lot. All the time. Yeah. And that's what's required because yeah, the bills are coming due. Like groceries are getting more expensive. Have you seen the price of gas? Like all this stuff, you right, know, right, right. but there's also like when you are home though, are you really present? And there's kind of that thing too. There's mm-hmm. um, like video games are so popular now. Uh, we just got a video game and that I haven't, that I haven't played since college. Oh. Back in college, I played a lot of video games because I used to smoke a lot of weed uh-huh. and like they go hand in hand. Yeah, I know. I <laughs> So you sit there all night with your buddies. <laughs> this is taking me back. Smoke a weed, playing video games. And so you're present, right? Like that counts, but you're not. And so it doesn't really count. No, you know, there's yeah, a difference between you were like present so and present. unavailable, even though we were around each other all the time, you were super unavailable. I mean, we were, in, it was college time, of course, but still you were constantly effed up and playing video games. Like yeah. that was a thing. I went to bed alone all the time. Yeah. And that is a very cathartic outlet for a lot of people. And I think that there's absolutely a case to be made for that's a great way to release some stress and they just have to have a balance for it. Yeah, not video games are very addicting. At night. <laughs> They're very addicting. Like they are. Uh, but like, we, we just it, got a game. I was playing with my son and I was like, Oh man, I remember this. And like time can go by so fast. You can blow 45 minutes faster than you would ever believe. Yeah. So fast. Wow. You could have been doing so much something else at that time. Yeah. Think about all the stuff you could be doing at that time. Yeah. I mean, just, being present. Yeah. Just be present. Like what's going on with your kids? Hey, what's new in school? What's your boyfriend's name again? Like to, to know things about your family. Yeah. To have some kind of a, you know, intimacy when it comes to your relationships and distance does not necessarily create great intimacy. Mm-hmm. Now long people can make long distance relationships work, but in general, like they're troublesome. It's difficult because you're not there. Yeah. You're just not there as connected as we can be. It's still difficult. And anyone in one would be the first to say, yeah, it's really difficult at times. Where if you're physically there, it's much easier. But you can be there and not there at the same time. Something that's crazy in these relationships is that the bare minimum for a lot of people is honesty. That should be the bare minimum. Like honesty, because it builds trust, and there has to be trust. That has to. You have to have that. Like that is so important. Yeah. To have in a relationship, but whenever it's it's it happens within these relationships, it's like, oh wow, they actually told the truth today. I'm so happy. You know, it's like, whoa, like, no, whoa. they need to be telling the truth all the time, all the time. Lying is not acceptable at all. Now, we did a values exploration back in a boundaries episode a while back. If you haven't listened to that, please go listen to that part. The parts I would I would be shocked to hear if honesty wasn't a value of yours. I would be shocked. Yeah. Like Maybe if you were Melissa M- Maleficent, is that her name? The evil queen from is it Snow White? No, uh, Sleeping Beauty. One of them. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know much about Disney princesses. Unless you're just a villain, like a real one, not the kind that we want you to be. One with boundaries, someone who's empowered, who gets called a villain, but you're not really. But I mean, I right. think most people carry this this value of honesty. Honesty is required to build trust. When people say what they're going to, they do what they're going to say, and they live by those things, you can trust them. And when you, that is the foundation of every relationship you have with everything in the world. Mm-hmm. I wrote about this recently. Like you trust, you probably trust the balcony at a hotel, at a hotel more than more you than do than you most people partner. without or, even realizing yeah. it. Yeah. Like you trust inherently when you walk out on that balcony that it's not going to drop you 12 feet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like there's trust in everything you do. There's trust with the, with the postal system, with your car, with the restaurant that you frequent, everything you trust. Yeah. Think about the trust that you have or don't have with your most intimate relationships. That's got to be present. And so, yeah, back kind of to that is there's no intimacy. There's no trust. There's no honesty. Like, you're right. A lot of people can be so uplifting for someone who told the truth today. Mm -hmm. Like, damn it. If that's not the absolute bare minimum, I don't know what is. Yeah. All right. What's next? You want to go on to the next thing or you want to go through all of these? We can go a few more of these. Okay. Because I think that, I don't know, some of them, I think a lot of people would accept is like, I think a lot of our listeners understand. They know 
the bare minimum. Like it's, it's what they're living right now. Yeah. But if you need me to tell you, I will. Okay. <laughs> then go on to the next one. <laughs> no, we're good. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's things like minimal appreciation, like Paige mentioned, like superficial, um, in engagement with things. It's, uh, neglect of, um, relationship needs. It's your unmet needs. It's duties around the home. It's, we talked about like a, an equal partner, like that is not asking for too much, but you would be shocked if some of the comments in these videos, Oh my gosh, it is wild. People are like, what do you do? I'm like, I just said we were equal partners. I literally do everything I just mentioned. Yeah. But this woman will say something like, I don't have to ask for laundry. I don't have to ask for him to pick up milk on the way home when we're out of milk. I don't, I don't have to ask for any of those things. Like they both are engaged to an equal degree. Mm -hmm. That's what an equal partnership is. And I think that everyone dreams for that, but it's sad that that's not the standard. That is not the standard. This so there, there is an effort on our part. There is a part, like you said, like we have to ask for things. We have to ask for what we want because it's not, it's, it doesn't come natural to your partner. I think something you've always been really good at is communicating your expectations with me. Yes. And when I was young, I was very quick to call those things too much to ask. Yeah. When I was young, you know, like yeah. just, like, I had high expectations in what your is, mind. Yeah. High expectations. Yeah. But I always came crawling back because I knew that there was something to what you were saying. Mm -hmm. And I knew that after we had the argument, there was a reason I was feeling bad about myself and not super proud. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you're right. I should be doing these things, but damn it. I don't want to yeah. like a little kid about it. You know, mm -hmm. I th think there's a lot of grown ass men with gray beards like mine that are kind of acting like this about things. Yeah, I agree. So why do we accept the bare minimum? Hmm. It's loaded. Yeah. Yeah. So typically in these relationships, we have a low self-esteem and it's just, we've talked about why we have a low self-esteem in these relationships and what happens, um, whenever we have an unequal partner, because we do feel extremely low and there's time, there are times when we have fear of rejection as well, because this is like I said before, and I've said multiple times, this is the person we marry. This is the person that we chose to live our life with. We don't want to be rejected by them. It's scary. And then our, our self-esteem is so low that we just, we just accept whatever we can get. That sucks. We don't have to do that. Yeah. For, I think for a lot of wheelies, like getting married, getting into relationships probably felt like a lot like uh, like, like roulette, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you roll the dice on that potential. Ooh, I can see it, man. I'm going to hit, you know, whatever. And it's going to be great. But it's like, gosh, it really is like rolling the dice. Yeah. Cause you're not. I've yet to meet anyone that I was like, oh, this person just doesn't understand. They're just lost. They're clueless. No, like so smart. Yeah. So smart. So emotionally intelligent. Like they know. They yeah. all know. You all know. Every one of you know. But you're right. Like with that, a lot of it comes from a place of low self-esteem and that fear of rejection. Yeah. And a lot of the times we're going to fear, we fear losing the marriage. We fear losing our partner. But you know what we should really fear? Losing ourselves. Absolutely. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Why did you never fear asking for more? Where did that come from? What was the texture of your mind and your inner world like? Even when we were young and you were telling me what was expected, why were you more than willing to communicate these things and not just communicate them, communicate them with passion? You would tell me I'm stubborn. <laughs> what, but where was that coming from? My values. So you didn't fear rejection or did you, you just didn't care. I didn't care. So you did fear it. You just didn't care. Right. Yeah. Of course I feared it. I mean like that. Nobody wants to be rejected. Being rejected sucks. That doesn't feel good. But also my values were so overpowering that I didn't care if that happened. Like you were going to get it or you weren't. So if we were looking at like an, a math equation here, yep. it's the belief in your values is greater than the fear of rejection. Yes. And that's really what it's about, right? Absolutely. At the end of the day. Yes. Yes. Because the whole, if you don't have your values to, if you don't stand up for your values, you're, you're not going to be able to stand up for yourself. You're not going to be able to live authentically or live the life that you want to live. You have to stand by your values, no matter what kind of fear you have. Because if you don't stand by the values, you're going to lose yourself. You will lose yourself. And that is way scarier than losing your a partner who isn't even there for you. Yeah. If you try to cheat even yourself equal with you. Yeah. If you try to cheat yourself on your values, like you will live a very, 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 um, I would say, um, 
disharmonious life like mm-hmm. you will just you will feel anxious you will feel like you're not living to your potential you will always wonder what's missing yes y- you'll feel that and you'll you'll be you'll, gaslighting yourself yeah yeah, so we're not going to tell you to lower your expectations. Now, we will tell you what a realistic expectation is with someone, I think. Oh, yeah. Well, with the partner that you're with right now, of course. But we're also going to tell you what we believe that you deserve and what type of expectations are. They're not too high. And if I get it my way, mm-hmm. I will get some of my own episodes out directed toward guys that listen or or women that listen that are in addiction, people that are in addiction trying to be better, trying to understand what we're talking about here. Yeah. Because I too was a person that didn't quite understand these things. And I looked mm-hmm. at a lot of these things like unreasonable demands as as opposed to someone who had a much stronger sense of values than I did and a much better sense of direction for where we ought to head. Yeah. You know, like they say that, like the joke is that like, uh, it's like women are bad at directions. Bullshit. Oh, Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. Uh-uh. That is, I disagree with that. I disagree with that too. Um, so I wanted to I wanted to touch on this too, is that another reason why people in these relationships accept the bare minimum is because they normalize the minimal effort. They normalize it because their partner normalizes it. And it becomes so difficult for you to see clearly when you're in it. And you think that this is just the best that you can have. And this is what you want. Or or this is just, they're telling you that your expectations are too high. They will convince you of it. And too. they will convince you of it. They're oh, yeah. not. You're not. Don't believe what they say. They're not telling the truth. You, no. You have to believe in your own self. You have to believe in you. Do not get your worth from your partner who is not capable of being honest with themselves, let alone you. Yeah, and I can't blame all this on addiction either. Like, no. This was, because I, I was this guy you're talking about, like, obviously. Um, it wasn't all about the addiction. In fact, I think it had very little to do with it. If any, if the addiction did anything at all, it was, it it helped distract me from focusing on it for any longer than a few seconds while we were arguing about something. Exactly. I just didn't think about it too much, you know, but it didn't have to do with the addiction as much. I think it was just the fact that I was very emotionally immature I was nowhere near ready for a real relationship or a real commitment. And you were light years ahead of me and just emotional development so far ahead of me. And you're asking for these things. And I'm like, my first reaction is visceral. And it's like, that's effing unreasonable. You're telling me to change everything about myself. That's not who I am. And it felt like, um, like an attack as opposed to a challenge. Right. You know what I mean? Like it felt oh, like an yeah. attack on my character. It's like, I'm not good enough. And that's what I was hearing. You used hearing. to always tell me that. You always felt like you weren't good enough based on things that I would say to you. When I really just had expectations of how I believed our relationship should be. Yeah, you're a really good dog trainer. <laughs> <laughs> you get the dog to believe. The jumping up on the touching the ball is a good thing and then hey you've you've won but no i think that you have to be willing there has to be willingness and like i just for anyone that's on the fence about all this and they've heard these arguments and they're sitting here listening to this and they're thinking it's bullshit it's not it's not it is often the case that one person has a much better emotional iq and eq than the other Mm -hmm. and you need to you need to relinquish control of that you need to let go of that you need to start listening you need to start really considering what's being talked about and what's being said and then start to take action to develop that. I like, I I started to really change whenever, like I thought I could just do it my way and I was going to figure it out my way. And I always thought there'd be some event in my life that happened that would get me there. I always tell you, I would always tell you one day I'll be a good man. I promise you one day I'll be a good man. Mm -hmm. But I always thought that like graduating college would do it. I thought that getting a promotion would do it. I thought that moving and buying a house would do it. Getting married. Getting married would do it. Having a child. Having a child would do it. These things came and went and nothing changed. No, it got worse each time. But it didn't, I wanted to do these things. Like from the most sincere place in my heart, I wanted to be that person, which is I think the only reason I am here today. Absolutely. Because I wanted it. I had to want it. Mm-hmm. And I think that most people do. I'm not saying everyone does, but I think most people do. They just don't even know where to start or how to go about it. Yeah. The first thing you can do is quit arguing you can, and start listening, start to relinquish control over what you think is correct because you're probably incorrect, much like me. Why are you talking to these people? <laughs> We're talking to the spouses. What are we doing? We get couples that listen and okay. I get I get emails from people that will say, okay. hey, um, we're listening. I would just I think rather... He's listening and... 
I'd rather you do your own little like M- Matt's motivational speech or something like that. I I'm, don't know. They have. Never mind. Keep going. I'm happy to STF you. Proceed. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't want to get off track. I want to talk to those who are actually being affected no, by you, this. No, you were right. I, I'm sorry about that. It's okay. Yeah, let's go. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, so another thing of why you might be accepting the bare minimum is that you might fear being alone. You might fear um, getting out of your familiar you know, comfort zone within your relationship because this is what you're, you feel like you deserve, but you deserve so much more and you're not asking for too much. And we're going to help, we help you get past the fear of being alone and being okay with yourself and building up your self-esteem to be okay with yourself with or without your partner. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I, I, I want to talk about if our expectations are too high or not. What do you think? Hell no. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say. Emphatic. Yeah. I will be real 100% that your expectations are not too high. Now, you were talking earlier about how there are some uh, there are some social media accounts or whatever that have these expectations of having men who are a certain physique or they have to look a certain way. Oh yeah. People can get really superficial about it too. Yes. That's not, that's high expect. That's totally different. What's what was that song? It's like six, five blue eyes. I have no idea. Uh, It was some, I think it was a few years back anyway, like, but the superficial stuff. Yeah. That's ridiculous. So, um, Actually, the woman that encouraged us to start till the wheels fall off has been in like this dating scene for a very long time. Yes. And shout out. She tells me about how this works, and it is absolutely wild. Mm-hmm. Some of the expectations that people have for their partner. It's mm-hmm. like you need to be at least six feet tall. You need to have these co- this color eyes, this color hair. You need to make this much money. You need to drive this type of car. Like, had to have gone to these schools. And so you start to decrease, ever decrease like the percentage of people that even exist out there. Yeah. And then you have a very large group of people fighting for this extremely small group of people. And then you haven't even taken into account the most important things. Are they right. emotionally intelligent? Are they, yes. are they a good partner? Do they, are they, do they have uh, humility and hubris? Are they, you know, willing to, to bend and would they even make a good partner? Yeah. But a lot of times the physical attributes get overshadowed. Yeah. Too much concern goes on that. Yeah. There's a lot of great short kings out there. I'll just say that. Right. Right. (laughs) So, okay. I'm going to go down this list. This is basically about interdependence and like what is expected in a healthy relationship. We've talked about interdependence a lot. Um, And this is really what we're asking for. And these expectations are not too high with somebody that you want to live the rest of your life with and who you want to parent your children with you know, and share a home with and make all these decisions. So grow old, with. grow old with, yes. Mutual respect. Both people respect each other's individuality, opinions, and boundaries. There's not very much of that going on. I know that there are some controlling men out there who do not want their partner to be an individual. Yeah. What's with that? They do not want them to go out with their friends. They do not want them to go to a gym. They do not want them to meet their friends for dinner. They don't want them to have their own individuality. Or opinions. And then, of course, the boundaries. Because you do speak your boundaries or you try to set these boundaries. And are they respected? No. Typically, they're not. No. That's not healthy. No, that's some crazy, like, shrimp energy. That huh? Shrimp energy. Like, what does like, that mean? Like, little man syndrome. Like, you're not allowed <laughs> to go to the gym or not allowed to have friends or go see your girlfriends. Or... I think that's just a controlling man. It's controlling. That, that's like when we talked about, like, Bancroft. And abuse and like that book. Uh, why does he do yeah, that? Yeah, why does he do that? Like that's, you hit on like every one of those characteristics in that. Yeah, absolutely. But I see this all the time in the community. That's wild, y'all. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. Um, another one is that they value and re- appreciate each other's strengths and differences. Mm-hmm. Now these are healthy differences, right? These aren't like, oh, I'm just a drinker. So you need to respect me for that. I was like, about to say <laughs> many have tried that argument. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, this is like just a difference in opinions, right? Like what is something that, okay. Like Matt loves sneakers hardcore and I don't really care even though he bought me sneakers for myself and sneakers I, are so cool and then, and then I wear them and I appreciate them but honestly like I, I I just I don't care I could wear the same sneaker for five years if I had to um but I respect your differences and I respect your strengths I don't see this in a lot of 
relationships. Yeah, that mutual respect of whatever you you love and believe in. Yes, and that's not asking too much. No, man, that's the point of a relationship at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, the next one's going to be healthy communication. Of course, we don't see this very often either. Open and honest communication is a cornerstone where you both feel safe to express your thoughts and feelings. How many of you do not feel safe expressing your thoughts and feelings in your relationship? Oh, I see a lot of that in the community. A whole lot because I've been there before. I know that. I know what it felt like to not feel safe, to not be able to share my feelings or my thoughts on something being scared that, you know, I'd be told that I'm too sensitive or I'm overreacting or you just aren't happy with whatever you're having or your expectations are too high. I know what that feels like. But now we're in a healthy relationship where we're able to talk about whatever we need to talk about and there's validation there. And that's expected. This is a healthy relationship. That's not asking for too much to have a safe space to share what you're feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And I just feel for all of you who do not have that safe space. I do. I know it hurts and I know it sucks. And I just want to hug you because this is one of the most important things that you need to have in a healthy relationship. Yeah. Yeah. You, you talk about interdependence a lot, like something that you are a firm believer in. Absolutely. Like two independent people that decide to be together mm -hmm. because they admire each other so much, not a relationship where you have someone who's just dependent on someone else accepting them for who they are. Mm -hmm. Oh, can we talk about that that thing, that quote that I heard today? Go for it. I was listening to the, this podcast and there was this this question that was asked and it's it's deep. And I didn't expect it to be as deep as it was. Do people love you for who you are or for what you do? Mm -hmm. Think about that and ask yourself that question. When you say what you excuse me, when you say what you do, does that mean um does that mean like acts or does that mean what you do for a living? When, what was the first thing you said? Acts, like actions, like acts, oh, of, acts. acts of love, acts of like, act, you know, like doing things. I thought you meant like Abraham Lincoln, cherry tree. <laughs> <laughs> like acts. A-X-E? Yeah. No, A-C-T. Like, okay. Um, <laughs> I think about it. So I, when I was listening to it, I took it in the sense of, I think it's because it's where my mind was today, like what I do for a living, like okay. like what I do for the world. Like I, I move trucks around the country. Like mm -hmm. that's what I do. And that's why people love me because I'm able to make their promises that they keep come true and I'm able to make them look good and it makes me feel good. So is they love me because of that or do they love me for me? But you could also flip that, right? And say what I do for other people and do I have value because my kids need me because I make awesome lunches and because I plan all their events and because I show up like a, you know, an awesome mom at their PTO stuff and all that is like, is that why they love me or do they just love me for me? Maybe children isn't the best example because no, children are so, it's so like unconditional. A, with children. Yeah, exactly. But think about other people in your life. Mm -hmm. Like let's say it's your, your love and your partner. Do they just love you because you make their lunch and because you ask them how they're doing. Is it just for the things that you provide to them or do they love you for you? Oh. And that's like a really deep question. It to is ask a deep yourself. question. Like, do they, do people love me for what I do or for who I am? And it's like, damn man, rather existential as I was thinking about it. And then someone, someone po paused the, the question a, a little bit different and said, now think about it from yourself. Self. Yes. So do I love me for what I do or for who I am? And that one took me for a loop. Mm -hmm. And I was like, holy crap. Think about it though. I mean, we can get into it, but I think it's just, I'd rather people just think about that for a moment. And so we talk about interdependence. We talk about like what, like if you don't love you, and if you don't love yourself, then you're just, your love is reliant on your ability to, for other people to derive meaning from your actions. Your love is contingent, yes. you know, it's, it depends on something rather than just being, um, you know, part of you, like because of who you are, because of the things, your values that you hold and because of the way that you look at me and because the way we feel when we're together, like, do I just love you for you? Like I absolutely do. Mm -hmm. And, but I was like, but with yourself, like yourself. ask yourself the question. Yeah. It's rather interesting when we talk about interdependence and like what we'll get later in this episode about empowerment and like self-care and self-love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that a lot of people lack in that department. I would, I would think anyway, I think I'm a lot journal of us, that tomorrow. 
That's a really, really it's a like, really seriously, interesting it's prompt. It's a deep, it's a deep prompt, and I think I want to explore it for myself. I I did it, and I think that a lot of my meaning that I attach to myself comes from what I do. It it comes from. Do you think you can shift that? I do. I think what it does is it highlights a some a place in me that's lacking, mm-hmm. where I'm not. You're putting your worth into something that's in, not into things like yeah, I yeah. One of my biggest faults as a human is that I want to be liked by people. I want to be liked when I walk in the room. I want to be liked by people. I don't Are know. you a people pleaser because of that? I think so. I think so. And I'm not sure where that comes from, like where that all started exactly. I, I, I've often believed that a lot of people have this, but <laughs> then I've also known people who truly do not give a single F and they're just like, I don't care. You know, you've done a really good Sheldon job Cooper types. Of, of not giving a shit or at least, you know, s- faking it. A I lot guess. of times I have to fake it till I make it. I just do it on faith and trust that if I just live by my values and just see how things roll, then I'll but know. This could be another thing for you to unravel, which is kind of kind of cool if you think about it. And I think for the listener too, as we're talking about this. Yeah, like, like, for sure. I'm just using myself as an example, but I want everyone to start to think about that. It's yeah. like, do I love me for me or just for the things I do for other people? Is that where my value comes from? Mm-hmm. Rather interesting to think about, especially in a relationship. Like I, I, I think I'm healthier now than I was at one time in my life, obviously. Cause yeah, I think yeah, a, no, duh. <laughs> when you're an addict, you have no self love, no. none like mm-hmm. underneath it all. That's what's going on with, I would say all of us mm-hmm. that are addicted. There's just not a lot of self love there. Um, but now I think that we're two people who are, I would say mostly independent, mm-hmm. but we find a common ground and we just absolutely love each other. Yeah. We choose to be with each other. Choose to. Yeah. yeah. And I, I love you for your, for your weaknesses and for your strengths and I value your opinions and you are my hero. Like I look at you as like, you are the voice in my mind that lives in there and like good conscience sort of, you know, like you are my good conscience. And then like my brain is like the devil on the other shoulder. Yeah. But I, I look up to you and I, I value you so much. Like I just, I think you, you hung the moon and I think that that's the same way you feel about me. hundred percent. And that's why it works. Yeah. Without that. I think if one person is doing it, it doesn't work. If neither of you are doing it, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. It has to be mutual. Absolutely. It has to be mutual, but it starts with self. I think it starts with self. And I, I kind of got to that. Yes. Yes. You. It, it's hard to love others if you're not loving yourself first. Because you don't, you don't know how to love in a way that's healthy. Right. Right? It's not healthy love. Yeah, it's more... Interdependence is healthy. Yes, it is. It is. Being independent, but depending on your partner for certain things is healthy. And it's not having high expectations. Right. I think that people-pleasing traits, like, um, we'll get into, like, echoism at some point. Yes, we will. We've talked about it, I think. Uh, A little bit, but I really, really, really want to get into it because it's something that I, I... I believe in, and I think it's a great topic for our listeners to understand the story of narcissists and echo. And I think that a lot of echoes like the, there's a narcissism spectrum. And on one end you have echo, Mm -hmm. which is pure empath. And then you have narcissists who are just purely selfish Mm self-love. They love themselves too much. Echo doesn't love themselves enough. Enough. And so there's gotta be a balance of the two. And so I can look back and I think that you can too. It's times where you were, wanting and wanting and wanting to derive value for yourself from what I would return to you. Because if I would just act how you want, that meant that you were worthy of love Mm -hmm. and vice versa. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, that's not true. It's not the case. Mm -mm. I think that that stuff happens naturally when two people love themselves that right there, you know, and, um, like there is a method to our madness here. We're probably not the best at communicating it, but our acronym VEER, it's validation, mm-hmm. it's education, it's empowerment, and it's recovery. Mm-hmm. The healing journey starts with validation. And we try to do that. Yeah, you and need then to we be heard. educate people. But then it's about empowerment. And that's the reason it's about empowerment because not a single person in this world with an amazing story ever did so from a place of feeling less than Mm -hmm. they did it from a place of empowerment. Once Mm -hmm. they believed in themselves, once they loved themselves enough to look the world in the face and say, this is what I deserve. This is what I know I can get. 
and I'm not going to settle for any less. Or they fake it till they make it. That's that part too, of it too. Which I have, have a to. lot of days like that. Yeah, we all do. I think it's important that we do that because we know it's healthy for us to get to that point. Where were we? Okay, we're going to go down. We were at healthy communication okay. on what expectations are and that they're not too high. These uh-huh. are what healthy interdependent relationships look like and what you're asking for is not too much. Right. Um, and in these relationships, asking to actively listen to each other and work together resolve con- to resolve conflicts constructively, that's not asking for too much. Mm-mm. It does not happen very often in the, these relationships at all. I mean, you're, you're not working together because there's a power imbalance there. And it, the communication just isn't very healthy. Right. All right. The next one is going to be emotional support. So you both provide emotional support, understanding, and empathy to each other. Empathy. Empathy is extremely important in the relationships. It is. And what do a lot of abusive or addict partners lack? It's empathy. It's empathy. It's pure selfishness. Yes. because Selfishness is the enemy of empathy. If they had empathy, they would be able to put themselves in your shoes and understand what they are doing to harm the relationship. And they're not doing that. No. So that's something that is necessary for a healthy relationship. And there, you are there for each other during the tough times and you celebrate each other's successes. I've seen times where people, um, do not celebrate their partner's success. That's whack. Like, because they're like jealous of it or something, or it's more of a control. They're losing control in they're that losing way. losing control. That's what it is. Yes. That's what it is. And I want that. That's the whole basis of all of it. Anytime they throw a fit, anytime you set boundaries, anytime there's something that like throws them off, it's because they're losing control and they're going to throw tantrums. Yeah. That's just the basics. Yeah. Losing control is like, I think that a lot of addicts, that's what they spend most of their time doing. And I've said this before. It took me a long time to discover what it was really about. Addiction, that mm-hmm. is. Like what addiction was really about for me. It was about control of my own emotions. Mm-hmm. And But it's still control. And that bled into every aspect and area of my life. My favorite thing about addiction was control. It was the ability to control my emotions. Yeah, Knowing that inside of that bottle... No matter what was going on in my life, there right. was a guarantee in it. So whenever you were doing that, you wanted to control people because they would impact your emotions. Yes, absolutely. It was all about control. It's like, I don't want to feel way. this way. So I'm going to say and do whatever I have to do to make sure I don't feel this way. And then I don't want to feel shame. I don't want to feel any of right. these things. And then when you're threatening my drinking or my drug use, you're not really threatening the use you're threatening my ability to control. Mm-hmm. And that's where people get really bent out of shape mm-hmm. and like seriously angry and irrationally crazy about stuff because there is no greater fear mm-hmm. than that. Than Yet y'all call us controlling. Yeah, isn't that ironic as shit? Oh, it just pisses me off. <laughs> Yeah, but that's what it's about, I think, for a lot of folks is yeah, it's the ab- sure. ability to control the emotions. Yep. And so when you threaten that, holy shit, the gloves come off. Yeah. And you get some of the craziest responses to that. But Absolutely. That's what's happening. They may not even realize it. No. And I can't speak for everyone here, and I probably shouldn't. I've just identified just, that within myself and a lot of other people. And I was going to say the experience that you've had with others is pretty similar down the line. I've never shared that and had someone go, no, that doesn't make sense. No. I've always been like, like, oh, like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I got a lot of that. Yeah. All right, the next one's going to be shared responsibility. So responsibilities and decision-making are shared with both partners contributing to the relationship and household. Mm-hmm. They work together as a team to achieve common goals. I rarely see any of this happening. It's always one person who has to take control of everything because the other person is not pulling their weight. It is necessary to have an equal partner. Yeah. If you want to have a functional household and relationship, you need to have an equal partner. It's a necessity. I don't know why it sounds like, um, like a bad thing. I don't know why it sounds like such a high expectation because it really shouldn't be. Well, you have to think that many years, not, it wasn't even that long ago, we're but one generation of, removed. I was going to say women were housewives. They were expected to do all of the household chores and they were expected to raise the children. You know, we started out our relationship very similar to that. Yeah, we had a really traditional type of 
set up like that. What would yeah, you even call that? Like we distribution did. of duties? We did because I, I became a stay at home mom, but this time and age is it's so fast paced compared to what it was back then. It's completely different. And we all need to pitch in somewhere. We all need an equal partner. It's not like one or the other, just because you provide doesn't mean you get to come home and sit on ass and not do anything. Like it, it, it that, that it doesn't work. It, our job is 24 7. 24 7. Never stop. Especially if we have children. Like, it's constant. Since having kids, like, that has been, I don't sleep the same. Like, everything has changed. I'm constantly on guard because I have children. I have responsibilities. I have things that I have to take care of. You don't have those same fears. I mean, you do a little bit now because we are more equal, but a lot of men, they don't have that. Yeah. And because they don't feel like they need to have that. Yeah, and I don't want to venture into territory by telling people what's right and what's wrong for their relationship. Listen, like everyone's got their own views on values and family values and what that distribution means to you. I just know for us that it doesn't it didn't work. It wasn't working. It no. wasn't wasn't even close to equitable for a very long time and it starts to wear. And I this is a funny tangent. I think it's kind of funny. It's actually kind of sad. I was doing some um research on You ever heard of Quaaludes? Yes. You ever seen Wolf of Wall Street? Yes. Remember that scene where he's like stumbling and he can't get in the car and they were taking Quaaludes. And so I was like asking this, there's this older guy that works for me. And I was like, Hey, did you ever take Quaaludes? He's like, no, but I had a friend that did, man. They were crazy. Those popular in the seventies, so, 60s, 70s. Yeah. Eighties. I think they're kind of faded out by the eighties, but okay. they were like a really, really strong barbiturate type, all encompassing, almost like a, like they produce like psychosis and all kinds. Did of, you take any? No, if I could get my hands on them, I would have. Okay. Hell, that would have been like the holy grail. No, I couldn't find quaaludes. But we started doing some history on, I started doing some research on the history of barbiturates and um, benzodiazepines and things like uh-huh. that. And so like Valium at one time was prescribed to housewives. And it was, I forgot that I saw this ad. It was an ad and it was like um, homemaker's best friend or something. And it was like this 1950s or 60s ad. And it was like this homemaker and it was like her, her pill was like the thing that would make her day better. And mm-hmm. it was Valium. It was like, that's what was going to make it all better. Think about that. They were prescribing drugs because drugs. the burden and the mental load of all that is too much for one person to bear. Yeah. This was a thing a long time ago. Right. But it was almost laughed at and scoffed at and they just threw pills at it. Wow. Nuts, right? Yeah. But now it's changing. Times are changing and shifting where women and we are like speaking up a lot more of what we need and what we want. And And it's not just, we don't try to be gender specific here when it comes to this. Like it could be swapped, obviously. Sure, absolutely could. But this is just how our experience has been. So, and I'm sure our listeners, they understand. I have seen a lot of men doing the exact things we're talking about Uh where they've got someone in addiction doing the opposite. Right. It's not, yeah, gender doesn't define it by any means. Right, right, right. Like generally one person is more responsible will take on those roles. Yes. There are a lot of rock star dads out there. Yeah. A lot of them. Yep. You want me to go? Yeah. Next one? Okay. All right. The next one is going to be independence, which is kind of what we talked about earlier is that we maintain our own identity, our interests, our friendships, and outside the relationship. And we have personal goals and goals and aspirations that we pursue individually. I don't have too much <laughs> goals outside of our relationship I guess but since we've been together for so long it's kind of they kind of just went together I think they're so enmeshed now yeah yeah but I mean I'm okay with that that's what works for us yeah um but I think there are a lot of couples out there that very much do have different like inner worlds and inner lives and that's Mm -hmm. a great thing yeah it's a great thing totally okay I think that you run into trouble whenever you completely abandon everything that you believe in, everything that you love, everything that you aspire to do for a relationship in general. I think you start to abandon yourself and that's kind of where you run the risk of getting lost. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the next one where it's uh, dependence with, without over-reliance. So you depend on each other for support, but you're not overly reliant or clingy. And everyone goes through, like, it's not black or white. Everyone goes through periods of time where you're going to need just more attention. Okay. Yes. It's not a bad yes. thing. Yes. No, it's not. This happens is not a lot. Black or white. There's a gray area here, obviously. But if that's what you're putting all of your worth into, that's when you're going to start losing. You yourself. do this really cute thing. What do I like do? Like last night, 
Uh, I was in bed reading or something like that on my phone, reading uh-huh. something. And you just, you crawled up on me and you're like, I need attention. I literally said that. You, you do that a lot. It's the cutest thing ever. It's hilarious. You know that our I daughter does it. that? Yeah. She's like, I want attention. She goes, I need attention. I just, I, I love the honesty about that. I love just the, the curtness of it. Yeah. I just think it's, it's like, great. I'm not going to sit here and just like, oh, you and know, And then get mad games. and run off. You're like, I need attention I need attention. Right <laughs> <laughs> give it to me or not like like, <laughs> like the dog does it you know like yes. comes up to you it's like this dog wants attention yes. you will straight tell I me will and it's the cutest you. thing ever i love it <laughs> okay and like we said you can function and thrive independently but choose to be together and right. that's what we like that's our whole purpose we would be okay without each other but we choose to be with each other yep there's trust and security so there's a strong foundation of trust where both people feel secure in the relationship again trust the foundation of every relationship every relationship period and there's so much trust that is betrayed in these relationships and it just breaks my heart because it, it i mean obviously we went through that a long time ago we haven't had that issue for many 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 years um but i know what it feels like and it's it's it sucks. It's the loneliest place in the world. It is so lonely. And you're confident in each other's loyalty and commitment. Think about that. Like, we'll have our little spats, right? We'll have these things where you're like, you need to get your shit together, Paige. You need to, you know, do better here. Do better. And you have faith that I'm going to do that. Yeah. Like, you we, know, we challenge each other all the time. Like, you know you're confident that I'm going to get it and I'm going to understand it and I'm going to take action and I'm going to do better. And I know the same with you, too. And I think that's important. Yeah, absolutely. That's where that, that confidence comes from within each other. So, all right. The balanced power dynamics. Our power and influence are balanced with neither partner dominating or controlling the other. Well, the power... There, there's such a power imbalance in these relationships. It's, mm-hmm. We talk about this in the course a lot about the power imbalance and the controlling aspect of it. Um, and decisions are made collaboratively. Colla- collaboratively. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm getting tired. There was a word earlier that I couldn't say. Familiarity. <gasps> you nailed it. Did, no, no, that sounded weird. Familiarity. You got it. <laughs> She's reading it. Went don't like four or five times. I do. I was like, "What is it with that one?" You're like, "I don't know. Something about it." Sometimes I stutter too, though, and I'll and y'all like to say remake. Oh, that's that's the remix. That's the remix. That's the DJ Page remix. Like to make fun of me. It's, it's kind of funny. Funny thing. Um, but like, you respect both partners' perspectives, their personal growth and development. Both partners encourage and support each other's personal growth and development. High five. That's where we roll, and that is not. That is not asking for too much. It is not asking for too much to ask your partner to grow and to be there, like and develop. Don't you, you want to see your best friend each other. win? Like, yes. Don't you want to see them win? Don't you want to see them improve themselves? Like, I really like this. They motivate each other to pursue their passions and improve themselves. Improve themselves. That yeah. is not controlling somebody. That is just ask, and it's not saying, "Oh, you want me to change? You want me to change?" Yeah. MF or I do want you to change. God I want forbid. you to freaking improve isn't, yourself. Isn't, isn't that, that what growth means? Isn't that what people do, That's right? That's what growing up means. It means that you are changing. You are always shifting. Now, it's not necessarily meaning that your personality changes or like your your core value type thing changes, but you grow the F up. Things change. Embrace it. Quit with this whole, that's just who I am. No, miss me with that bullshit. <laughs> Boom, my <I> job. <laughs> I think that one of the greatest compliments you can be paid, if you haven't seen a friend in like four or five years and they look at you and like, you have changed so much. Like, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank I you. I should hope so. Yes. Uh, if they haven't, ask, what have you been doing the last five years? Okay, so you were ahead of me when it came to your physical health, right? And things like that. You started working on that way before I did. And... But you influenced me and you inspired me. You didn't push me or anything like that, but you still helped me and you wanted me to improve and you wanted to see me do better and you were there for me and you supported me. And it had nothing to do with the physical piece of it. No, it, it was, did not. It was all mental. It, it was, was because I growth. knew I knew how much peace came with you knew the benefits. taking care of yourself. You knew like the benefits. Just that freaking weightless feeling you have in your mind like when you're doing something good for yourself. Yeah. I was like, I want to share. I want you to experience that too. It's an, right. amazing. Just like you, I challenged you with, you know, the emotional intelligence pieces of things and, and to be an equal partner and stuff. You challenged me with other things like my physical stuff and, and even 
regular everyday shit, you know, that you're like, okay, you could do better here. Like you don't spell it out like that, but you influence me and you inspire me and you just want me to improve. There's nothing wrong with wanting your freaking partner to improve. No, you're not asking for too much. No, you're not. Please don't ever feel like you're asking for too much no. on, on any of these things. And, and the last one, healthy boundaries. I think every, everyone should have some degree of healthy boundaries. You have to have a boundaries. Period. You have to. If you don't have boundaries, then it's going to be chaos. The only person in your life that shouldn't have boundaries is like your five-year-old. They don't give a damn about your boundaries. <laughs> no, they do not. <laughs> but you could even enforce those at times. You can have a parent watch them or something. Hey, this is mom's time. Whatever it might be. But kids are about the only people that you don't expect to follow them all the time. I, Adults, though? I had boundaries with our kids when they were really young because I did need my own time. I would say that, hey, guys, I need to have my, this is my morning work. This is my morning time. Yeah. And I would close my door. This is when they were like five and seven. Go watch us in Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Yes. Yes. I would have the TV on in the living room and have them do their thing while I shut my door in the bedroom and I would do my morning work and it would take 30 minutes. And I was like, I, these are my boundaries. I need to have this time. And it was okay. And then I don't think they knew, they knew not to knock on the door. Maybe sometimes they would, and I would, I would just like correct them and say, yeah. I'll be right back. I'll, I had to have that time. I had to, you know, one of the externalities of doing all these things. And like, if you, if you stop asking for this stuff, then one of the things that you do without realizing it is you sort of model that for your children and you let them know that it's okay not to ask for these things. It's okay Boom. to expect this. It's okay for all these things. Like for, for all the boundaries we have. Like we allow our kids even to have those. Like I will not go in their room without knocking on the door and being told I can enter. Yeah. Period. I won't do it. Yeah. Like you told me I was really bad about that. Well, they told me you were I've, bad about I've, that. I've learned. I figured out that I was definitely crossing a boundary. You, and I you were doing really this bit where you knock. I knock it just open, but I was like, "These are my kids." But then again, you're right. Like I do respect their space. I always respected our kids' space, depending on their age. You know, it's always age appropriate. But in general, you start to model this stuff. For, but you do. For it's them important. Too. Like they're always watching. Don't yes, forget that. Yes, they need to see that. Okay, so, you skipped something. Well, that w I wasn't going to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, I think we can all understand why these things are beneficial. Right, right. Period. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So now this last part, we're just going to talk about how to increase your self-love and your self-esteem so that you're not putting it all into somebody else. Like your worth doesn't have to come from somebody else. Yeah. I, um, I kind of back to that question that was posed earlier that I heard on, I think it was Modern Wisdom, that do do people love you for what you do or for who you are? And do you love yourself for what you do or for who you are? Self-love is so incredibly important. And that is, there is a journey to empowerment that is very much you in your own mind. It's, it's, it's a very lonely journey. And the reason that we are so big on self-care, like if you were on our community call this last week, that's what it's about. And we're really trying to push that like a our call, call to our life, our life. Sorry. Okay. Our, our call to action. We don't do this a whole lot. But our call to action is we want to know what you're doing for self-care. I want to know what you're doing for self-love. I want to know what you're doing for self-esteem. I want to know what you're doing, what action you're taking today. We will always be here to validate you. We will always be here to let you know what's right and what's wrong based on what we know. But more than that, I want to see people become empowered. But that's where we can only do so much. Mm -hmm. But just like we've talked about here, challenging people, like I'm challenging you. I'm, if you're listening, I'm challenging you to take care of yourself in some way. Yeah. That can be something really small, like journaling. That can be like taking care of your body by eating healthy foods and drinking all the water you're supposed to eat, drink. Yeah, as Paige sits over here and sips, sips some water. You know, if, if that can be consuming less intoxicating substances, that can be any number of things that lead to you taking care of yourself and honoring yourself. That can be defining your values and really focusing on them and, and, and asking yourself throughout the day, am I living by these? So I think the first thing, and we've talked about the importance of therapy, journaling and therapy are so incredibly important to develop self-awareness. For sure. And to reflect. Yes. So we gave you a journaling prompt already. Like yep. Journal that and see what comes from it. Mm -hmm. You'd be shocked. And journaling is very humbling. I love it for that. I love the honesty that comes with just that page and that pen and no, I don't have to share it. I don't have to send it to anybody. It's just me and the page. Yeah. And what comes of it is anyone's guess, but I will always know myself better 
and I'll, I'll be able to see my shortcomings and where I'm not, where I'm not living up to my own values or where I'm scared, like where my fears are coming from. They're just on the page. It's a way to become more self-aware, which is going to make me love myself in some way more mm-hmm. or just make me understand myself some way more. Yes. And it will also create in for me anyway, when I'm more aware, I have a higher self-esteem. For sure. Even when I'm more insecure about things, knowing that about myself, like this is who I am right now, I don't I don't have the fear of walking around like, oh my God, people are gonna notice it. Yeah. I'm just this is who I am. I, I come to accept myself more. It's more like a self acceptance than anything else. Yeah. It's incredibly important. That's great. Boundaries. You've talked about the importance of boundaries and empowerment. Oh yeah. You have to set the boundaries. You have to doing the hard thing and expecting people to throw a tantrum and not accepting your boundaries, but you following through with them is what's going to build up your self-esteem because you're going to realize it's not as bad as it was before because you're starting to live by your values. Yes. When you start to live by your values, you're going to build up your self-esteem and you're going to start to love yourself more because you know what you stand for. And you're standing up for it. And you're standing up for it. They're going to call you a villain. That's fine. Let Let them. them. Let them. Let them say whatever they want. It doesn't matter what they think. I know you might feel like it matters what they think, but it doesn't matter what they think. What matter thinks it, what matters is what you think about yourself and how you want to live your life. Your value is not derived from what what this one particular person feels about you in any given day. Yeah, it's just not. Mm-mm. I'm terrible about focusing on what one person thinks about me, and I can just kill the force for a tree. That one person doesn't like me, that means everyone dislikes me. Mm-hmm. I, I, I go, I, I throw these pity parties a lot. Oh, a lot of and us do that. It's very common. Someone, because someone can disagree with you or say something, you know, um, allude to the fact that you were short sighted on your perspective. And like, I, I, we come across this more because we're out there, we're public. So negative comments, like, they hurt sometimes. Mm-hmm. Someone will say something to me, I'd be like, I should just stop writing. I should just say, stop saying anything. We catastrophize that. Catastrophize, but, you know, there's, kind of back to the point about setting boundaries and whatnot, living by your values. It's like my worth is not derived by what this one person thinks. No, they're just not. No, I believe in my values. My boundaries support my values. If you disagree with those things, that's okay. Right. I have to love myself enough to set a boundary, which is like the scariest thing. Yeah. And I want to take this moment for, to say that if they are, if they speak negatively, towards you and they call you names or they call you a bad mom or they call you a bad person or they call you all these things. These are not true. This is not true. Do not believe what they say. But I'm also going to say if they're love bombing you and they're, you know, they'll go back and forth, right? You can't believe anything that they're saying. They cannot be honest with you. They are not being honest with themselves. So they cannot be honest with you. So you have to love yourself. You have to know who you are and rebuild yourself so that you you don't have to listen to what they're saying. It'll get to a point where you're like, I just, I don't believe it. You need to believe in yourself Yeah. and what you say. And this just doesn't apply to your primary relationship no. husband wife boyfriend no. girlfriend whatever it might be oh. this this is for all your relationships you could be struggling with this at work mm-hmm. i do all the time my value is i i am only as good as the last kind email i got in my mind if outside of that i'm just shit i have those days all the time where i feel like i'm so worthless to everyone and everything and those are times where i know i'm not taking care of myself when i'm taking care of myself I don't feel that way. So often. true. You know, I just don't. Absolutely. So true. Because I've gotten back onto my program within the past two weeks yep. because I felt like I was losing myself again and I was going down like you know, I talked about it in the last episode. Um, but since I have been on track, on point, doing self-care every day, I see so much clearly, like more clearly. I see things from a different perspective and I'm able to I have more resilience you know, like I, I have more self love. I care about what I'm doing and I, I can block a lot of the noise when before everything would sting. Oh yeah. It you hurts, know? man. Yeah. Everything hurts. Yeah. So that is so, so that's why self care is just so freaking important. Yeah. And along the same lines, we talk about physical health being a huge piece of that yeah. mindfulness techniques as well. Yep. Uh, Meditation is huge for that. Mm-hmm. If you've never meditated, go to YouTube Yes. And search guided meditation. Yep. They have them that are like five minutes long. I like the 10 minute ones. Or you could go for 45 minutes or an hour. I did five minutes today though. 
I like I like ten minutes. My brain is like a freaking hailstorm, and every piece of hail represents some random thought. It's really hard to meditate, but when I do, I feel so much better. So good. So connected and just confident, and I feel secure in myself and in my skin. It gets you out of the shit storm for a while, and then you can see clearly again. Yeah. It's so powerful. It's amazing. But you have to be consistent with it. I'll say that it took me about three months of being consistent to actually get the benefits from it. Now I pick it up and I'm like, I love this. Like I, every day I want to meditate. I've been meditating every day for two weeks. Now. It's awesome. It's amazing. Okay. Um, building a support network, which we've discussed multiple times, you know, reaching out your friends, family and support groups, get in the community. It's very important because you're going to be with people who are going through the exact same thing that you're going through and you're going to gain a lot of knowledge and strength and empower yourself there realizing you're not alone. And I, I want people to also understand this is that but your struggles right now are going to be someone's survival guide. Yeah. You might not think that you have anything to offer. You might just be a lurker. You might be someone that doesn't like putting themselves out there. You might be like me and you don't like posting on social media. You think selfies are cringy. Like look at my Instagram. Last time I posted was like a year ago. I'm just really not like we're on the podcast, but I feel like it's different because we're having a conversation, but yeah, yeah. just like posting. I don't like doing that. I, I don't know why I need to get over myself because it could help people. That's always been your thing. Like you need to share that. Like that could be helpful for someone. I do it to share, to help other people. And it also holds me accountable. It keeps me going because I'm able to put it out there to the world. At least, you know, like this is what I'm doing. And if I can inspire you or influence you to, or motivate you to just do something, I'm winning. That's amazing. I get help. You get help. It's a win-win. It's win -win. a win-win. So Please, if you're not in the community, get in the community and don't just be a member of the community, be an active participant in the community. When you see someone who's struggling and you have a suggestion, offer it, offer it from a place. If I've been there before, yeah. it's going to help someone and it's going to help you too. Right. Listen, AA has known this for like 90 plus years. Like the 12th step is literally give back. Right. Like I've sponsored a, a lot of people and I talked to a guy um, like Saturday or something. He called me. He's starting to chair meetings and help other people and take people's phone calls. And he's doing the same thing I did for him. He's like, it's amazing. I'm like, you know how you used to always call me and like thank me for meeting you? And I used to tell you that you didn't have to do that. You get it now, right? He's like, I do. I get it. Because I get as much from this as they do. I'm like, right. that's the way it works. Right. Be the change you want to see. Yes. Start start living that change and it will happen in your life. It just manifests itself like that. Yep. I shouldn't, I can't believe I should use the word manifest. That's one of those cringy buzzwords that gets used a lot on social media. <laughs> but do it. it. And it's true. Like you plant that seed and it starts to grow and yeah. you start to feel more proud of the person you are. And you might even find an alternative purpose that you never dreamed was inside of there. Did you ever think that you could help someone? It's the most amazing feeling in the world. Mm -hmm. Put yourself out there and see what happens. Yeah. Participate. It will empower you. It will make you love yourself more. Yeah. And they may or may not take your advice, but that's okay. They least. don't have to. They don't have to. They don't you have planted to. Cool. a seed. That's Yeah. Don't take important. it personally if they don't. Yeah, exactly. All right. So pursuing personal interests. I have like, this depends on where you are within your healing journey because it's, some people just don't have hobbies, you know, and you don't really know what you're interested in yet. Sometimes you have to go back in time or whatnot and like I'm getting back into dance, which we've discussed before, but I'm going the extra mile and taking more than one dance class. And that's going to be interesting, but it'll be something for me. And I'm excited for that. I'm excited for you too. I love it that you're able to explore that. It's like your form of art. It it's, is. It is art. I it shouldn't is. say your form of it. it is art. And it is. it's the expression of that is so personal and meaningful. Yeah. I can't wait to see you grow from that. Yeah. And if you're, if you're into art, um, if I've, we see a lot of painters in the community, yes. it, like physical arts always just amaze me because I'm not an artist. I can't draw. I can't paint. I can't do any of those things. Whatever. Um, but maybe you like to write, maybe you like to play music. Maybe you just like to listen to music. Everyone likes listening to music, right? Yeah, There's no one who's like, so. music sucks. <laughs> like ex feel the expression of art in some way, engage in some kind of a hobby, whatever it is that you feel like you could try for growth. Maybe it's something you've never done before. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've never thought of yourself as someone who hiked or paddleboarded or kayaked. Yeah. Give it a shot. Ooh, I love kayaking. It's greatness. We just can't do it here because it's too hot. Um, 
Okay, I'm going to go to the next one because I feel like we've we've got... Beat that dead horse? Yeah. Uh, affirmations and positive self-talk. So I think this is important because I know a lot of women in the community don't like looking in the mirror. They'll look at themselves and they feel like they don't know the person anymore or they're constantly thinking negative thoughts and they don't feel worthy. I want you to challenge those negative thoughts. I want you to look in the mirror... I want you to soften your face and I want you to look at all of the positive things on you in your body, even a full size mirror, something, look at all the good things. Look at something that you love. Do you have a beautiful smile? Do you like the way your eyes look whenever you're just like in the sun? Do you like the way your hair falls? Look at the things that you were proud of and who you love. If it's really hard for you to do that, which I, I've i been there. I've been there to where I've looked in the mirror and I'm just like, I, I don't even want to look at myself right now. You know, I would start making changes, obviously, and I would start to really push myself to do different things. But you have to start somewhere and you need to challenge those negative thoughts because you are beautiful how you are right now. And just look at yourself and say, I love you. It's important. I love that. I love that you shared that. I think. I've had to do this. Yeah, I think there's so much benefit to doing that. You can you can get so down on yourself at times. Yes, and you're the, your worst critic, and you can look in the mirror and say all these negative things about yourself. Look at the positive shit. Look at the positive. Like, look at the good stuff. Like, I have, I've talked about this on my page's perspective. I have stretch marks all up and down my stomach, all the, like, everywhere, constantly. And I have a, um, a mommy apron is what people say, because I gained a lot of weight with my firstborn, um, because we, you were in really bad active addiction and I was not taking care of myself, but I look at myself in the mirror and I, I'm not disgusted by it. I'm not, I'm like, that is me. That's who I am. I'm going to accept this. Yeah, I'm going to always work harder for my physique because that's something that I want to challenge myself with. There's a gray area here. Yeah. But I'm still looking at it in a positive way. I'm not looking at it as a negative, you know? And I've got cellulite too. Like, that's me. That's my body. It'll always be there unless I have surgery. And I'm not, I don't want to do that shit. <laughs> Fine as hell. I don't know what you're talking about, I'm man. just saying, like, you look at yourself and look at the good. Give yourself a pep talk in the morning. Yeah, and the physical attributes are one thing, but I think something else that's really powerful. We've talked about this before. I want you to write down 20 things. Not 20, that's too much. Let's We've 10. talked about this. 10? 10. 10 things. 10 things. 10 things that you are. That you are. There's this quote that I love and sort of to, not necessarily disagreeing with what you were saying about affirmations because I don't think that, and I agree with the quote. The quote says, that confidence doesn't come from just shouting affirmations in the mirror. It comes from having a stack of undeniable proof that you are what you say you are. So when it comes to like some of those physical things are really important. Yeah. You likely are much more beautiful than you give yourself credit for. You never hear it. You never take too long to consider those things. But you are, I promise you, but something else you are is an amazing human. Yes. You're amazing. You are empathetic. You are caring. You are genuine. You are authentic. You are funny. You are fun. You're interesting in some way. These things are true. They're not just true because you say they, that you want them to be true. I'm not telling you to shout in the mirror. You're going to finish a marathon tomorrow and you've never run a marathon. Like that's not right. what we're talking about. I want right. you to write down the qualities that you know you hold. Yeah. The things that you, that you admire about yourself. Let's remember those things. Write those things down and remind yourself. I've got a journal and I will pop it open every so often and I hate doing it. I hate reading my old stuff, but I will at times. When I get really down about things and I'll go back and read it, I'll be like, I'm not such a terrible person as I think I am right now. I'm really not. And I can I can start to appreciate myself. I'm just gentle with myself. Okay. I'm not horrible. I'm actually not that bad of a person. All right. I, I have to remember that at times though. Well, so do I. I tried to do this, this, this exercise recently within the past couple of months and it was really hard for me to do yep so let's do some how about calls to action here so practical steps here that you can take daily practice of some kind to help boost your self-esteem self-care self-care in the some community. way post and, about it and let us know what you did yep. right like on the internet it, it's uh, if you didn't post about it it didn't actually happen i'm gonna hold people to that for a little while <laughs> for a little while right the community needs positivity, needs to be reminded that we can talk about these things all day long. You can wish in one hand, shit in the other, see which one fills up faster. Sometimes, at some point, we have to follow Take this up action. with action. 
It has to follow with action. We can validate you all day long, but if you're not going to take action, it's just going to be a validation fest, which yeah. has benefits in the beginning. Absolutely. It starts the journey, mm-hmm. but at some point we have to take responsibility for our healing. Right, right. So do but something. But there are different levels of people coming into the community at all times. So, and we recognize that as well. For sure. And we recognize the growth of the people who have been there for a while. Yeah. but so it, it's kind of cool. And so if you're an OG, you've been around for a little while, hey, like you have a responsibility in some ways, just like you were found, help, help someone else, return it, mm-hmm. pack it back into the stream of life. Set some kind of a personal goal, short term, long term, whatever it might be. You want to make a goal that you're going to meditate five minutes a day for the next four days. Great. Great short term goal. Yes. Let's make a long term goal that you're going to do it for five minutes for 30 days before the year is over. Yep. Something like that. It doesn't have to be meditation. You pick it, whatever it might be. If you're not in therapy, get a good therapist, Mm -hmm. get a counselor, get a coach, get someone who knows something who can validate you and give you some actionable tools to move forward. Um, We've talked about this before. If you're in the state of Texas, Taylor Counseling Group, we don't talk about this enough, I don't think, but Paige and I do coaching calls. If you're ever interested, like I want to talk to her, yeah, you can do that. Go to our website. You can book it. Shameless plug there, but it's helpful <laughs> for a lot of people or I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and then, hey, there's a lot of things you can do on any given day. You can read a thought for the day in a book. It takes five, 10 minutes tops to really think about it. There are articles you can read. You Sign can share with other newsletter. people. Sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already done that. We talk about community, the importance of community. We talked about it in our live on Sunday night. If you weren't on that live, one of the things we tell people to do is find a group of people, four to five people, preferably any bigger than that. And the group chat gets too wild Yes, and it gets too busy and you start to ignore it over time because it's just nonsense. Mm -hmm. But four to five people, find four to five people, find your tribe. They're in there. I promise you. When you see someone post, reach out to them. I want you guys to connect. We want you to connect, exchange phone numbers, meet up, get coffee. We have big plans for Till the Wheels Fall Off for Tufo. We want we want chapters and meetings in person all over the world, really. But yeah, yeah. we're gonna have to start small and we're gonna have to rely on like the street team. You guys are gonna have to start it first. Yep. Until we get the resources to do something like that. Mm-hmm. So it starts with you guys. Yeah. Um, I think that's all we've got. That's here. it. <laughs> like at the end of the day, this is a lot. you are not asking for too much. No. You are not, your worth is not derived <laughs> from someone else. It comes from you. From you. It starts with you. It ends with you. But we if will you happen, love you until you can love yourself. Absolutely. We will, every step of the way. If you happen to find someone along the way that loves you too, great. Mm-hmm. But your you and your value is not contingent on what someone else does or doesn't do for you. I promise you that. Yep. You're amazing inside and out. We want to see you grow. We want to see you flourish and we want to hear about it. Yes. So please post, please be in the community. All right. That's all we've got until next time. I'm Matt. I'm Paige. And we'll see you. Bye.